In our previous video, we saw how Earth's natural greenhouse effect has allowed planet to go from a ice age or snowball Earth to the world that we live in today. And that's the good news, but the bad news is that we are intensifying this greenhouse effect at an unprecedented rate. And the primary driver for the additional greenhouse gases is, of course, human activity, namely the emissions from the burning of fossil fuels. That's the primary source of additional carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And the secondary source comes from the, the farming of livestock. Now, this accounts for about 20% or so of the global warming gases that are released. So how is it that adding additional greenhouse gases intensifies the greenhouse effect? Well, before we see the greenhouse effect is just a natural phenomenon. We have certain gases in the atmosphere that absorb and re-radiate heat back to the surface. So that is what brings the Earth up to a habitable, comfortable temperature range that we enjoy today. However, due to human activity, we've been intensifying this greenhouse effect. We've been adding extra gases to the atmosphere, and now we're bringing even more heat back to the surface. And this has resulted in a dramatic increase in global temperatures, especially since the Industrial Revolution. Notice that most of the warming is occurring at the North Pole. As a matter of fact, the North Pole has been warm enough to actually thaw in the middle of winter in the last couple of years. So when we look at the effect of greenhouse gases on the temperature of the Earth, and we compare them to the observed temperatures, there's a remarkable correlation. Okay, fine, but hasn't Earth gone through climate change in the past? Certainly it has. There are changes in Earth's orbit. Uh, sometimes it goes from a circular orbit, which we are basically at today, and sometimes the eccentricity is increased. And this is a cycle that the Earth's orbit goes through naturally, lasting over about 100,000 years. Additionally, Earth goes through periodic changes in its tilt, uh, cycling from 22 and a half degrees to 24 and a half degrees. Uh, today we are somewhere in the middle. And we've also learned about Earth's natural precession around its own axis. And this is about a 26,000 year wobble of the Earth. So all of these cycles, these Milankovitch cycles, have resulted in increased amounts in carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. As Earth has gone through natural warming periods, carbon dioxide is naturally released into the atmosphere, and that will bring us to a warm Earth. And then the cycles continue, and the carbon dioxide naturally is sequestered away, leading to an ice age. And it's because of these cycles that Earth's CO2 concentrations have never exceeded 300 parts per million. However, beginning in 1950, for the first time, Earth's atmosphere broke 300 parts per million. And today, well... We have to rescale our graph here so we could bring it down. Today, we are well above 400 parts per million. This is unprecedented. We haven't seen concentrations of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere in at least 7 million years. And these carbon dioxide levels are rising. Okay, well, if you talk about this with some people, you're going to hear a lot of objections, which is kind of strange because nobody really objects to physics or chemistry, and yet this is just physics and chemistry. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the other factors that may or may not be responsible for the warming that we see today. First of all, is it the sun? Well, it is true that the sun has varied its output over time, and the long-term trend of the sun has been to get brighter. But sometimes it cools down and brightens up, and yes, that can contribute to ice ages and to warm periods on Earth. However, since 1880, which is around the time the Industrial Revolution began, the amount of radiation that we've received from the sun has well, it's risen slightly by the 1960s, but it's actually been trending downward ever slightly. Meanwhile, global temperatures are not exactly what you would call correlated to the sun's output. But we can go a step farther, and rather than just compare the sun's radiance on Earth, we can compare the sun's temperature contribution to the observed temperatures. And as you can see, there's just not much of a boost from the sun. It's a very negligible contribution. Or could it be the Earth's orbit? Well, not really. Remember, 
those variations take place on the order of tens of thousands to a hundred thousand years. Therefore, it, those changes could not have had any effect since the 1800s. What about volcanoes? Well, it certainly is true that volcanoes do emit a great deal of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, but they also emit a lot of ash. And it's that ash that, if anything, absorbs sunlight and prevents it from warming the surface in the first place. So in some cases, volcanic activity can have a net cooling effect on global temperatures. Well, maybe it's all these three things combined. Well, we can certainly add those up and see what we get. And unsurprisingly, we see that there's really no major effect on the Earth's temperatures due to these natural factors. Well, what about land use? After all, we clear a lot of land, but the result of that has been to cool down the Earth ever so slightly uh, as because we are now exposing more of the land to sunlight. Well, what about ozone pollution? We had a big problem with that in the 1980s, but that's largely been addressed and, if anything, is not really contributing to the global temperatures either. Well, what about aerosols? Well, sulfide aerosols come from coal burning and they do offset some of the warming. The problem is, is that they also produce acid rain, so that's not any good. All right, well, the only thing that's left are greenhouse gases. And once you compare the temperature contribution from greenhouse gases, boy, it sure starts to match up with what we see. If anything, it would be a little bit higher, except we do have some of these mitigating factors. So the ozone, the land use, the aerosols, all of the net human factors very closely track what we see occurring around us. When we put all of these factors together and compare them to what we actually see, the results are pretty remarkable. We see something that is very close to what is actually going on around us. And these effects are by no means hypothetical. Since the 1980s, spacecraft have been monitoring the amount of ice in the Arctic and we can see what a dramatic decrease in ice we now have in 2016. As bad as this is, however, it's the land ice which is very worrisome. For example, here is a glacier in Greenland in 1935. Here it is again in 2013. The amount of ice decline in Greenland is very worrisome because as this ice melts and falls into the ocean, sea levels rise. And it's this rise in sea level that is now causing routine flooding in coastal cities like Miami. This is not the result of a hurricane. This is just your typical monthly flooding in Miami. And the extra heat in the atmosphere are causing drier conditions in areas that are already prone to forest fires. If we compare the temperatures, uh, they've been rising steadily since 1970, and the number of fires have been increasing as well. But the increased heat brings with it drought and crop failures. But most of the heat goes into the ocean, and this is why we are seeing an increase in the number and severity of hurricanes. This is Hurricane Maria, which devastated Puerto Rico in 2017. And as of this recording, parts of Puerto Rico and many other States and countries in the region are still recovering from that terrible hurricane. Meanwhile, other parts are experiencing more severe landslides and mudslides. These are just a few of the effects of climate change. I guess the only question is, will we change? Now you might be wondering, what does all this have to do with astronomy? I mean, after all, aren't we supposed to be learning about Earth as a planet? The answer, I think, is yes, we are. However, this is part of life on Earth. This is something we have to think about and make some choices. It matters if we burn fossil fuels. It matters if we raise livestock the way we do. It matters who we vote for. It matters what we do. So what are you going to do about it?